Red Kachina prophecy, um, the five Apache five spirits, things like this tonight. So uh, let's go first with, do you know what a skinwalker is? A skin, if you don't, I'm about to tell you. So <laughs> um, a skinwalker is, it's from Navajo, the Navajo culture. Um, it is a type of harmful witch who has the ability to turn into, possess, or disguise themselves as an animal. And this term is not used for healers at all. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, if you, you know, encounter a skinwalker, you'll know. Uh, a little background on it. Um, in the Navajo language, uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it, but it translate, translate to by means of how he or she goes on all fours. The most common variety seen in horror fiction uh, by non-Navajo people is one of the several varieties of Navajo witch, uh, specifically a type of uh, anti-gin. Anti -gin. The legend of the skinwalkers is n not uh, too well. Yes, they can turn into animals. Um, yeah, it's a it's a harmful witch to turn into. They can possess, disguise themselves as an animal. Absolutely. Okay, got lost for a minute. In order to practice their good works, the traditional healers learn about good and evil magic. Uh, most can handle that responsibility, but some people be can become per become corrupt. And they turned, basically, they turned to the dark side, okay? Um, the legend of the skinwalkers is animals associated with this witchcraft usually include tricksters, such as a coyote. Uh, but they can include other creatures, usually those associated with death and bad omens. They might also possess living animals or people and walk around in their bodies by locking eyes with them. Skinwalkers may be male or female, but they are typically male. Oh, are we surprised? No. Okay, <laughs> that's all another story, right? Uh, some of the skinwalker stories told among Navajo children may be complete life and death struggles that end in either skinwalker or Navajo killing the other, or uh, partial encounters that include a stalemate. Encounter stories may be composed as Navajo victory stories. Um... The non-native interpretations of skinwalker stories, uh, they typically take the form of uh, partial encounter stories on the road where um, the person is particularly temporarily vulnerable, but then escapes from the skinwalker in a way not traditionally seen in Navajo stories. Sometimes Navajo children take um, normal derived folk stories and substitute generic killers. Um there is a place, and this is really interesting to me, known as the Skinwalker Ranch. Has anybody heard of this uh, Skinwalker Ranch? I figure you might, um, Michelle. Yep, Skinwalker Ranch. And it's also known as the Sherman Ranch. Um, this is uh, about a, about 512 acres um, southeast of uh, Ballard, Utah. So, and this is allegedly a site of paranormal and UFO related activities. Its name is taken from the Skinwalker of Navajo legend concerning malevolent witches. Um, uh, there's been many claims, and uh, they first appeared in the Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, Deseret News, okay, and later in the alternative weekly Las Vegas Mercury as a series of articles by journalist George Knapp. And these early stories de detailed the claims that a family uh, that had re recently purchased and occupied the property um, only to experience an array of inexplicable and frightening events. This is called it's Skinwalker Ranch and it's outside of Ballard, Utah. Um, they, uh, uh, Colm Keller and co-author George Knapp, uh, uh, co-authored a book in which they described the ranch, uh, being acquired by the National Institute for Discovery Science 
to study the uh, sightings of UFOs, Bigfoot-like creatures, crop circles, glowing orbs, and poltergeist activity uh, that were all reported by former owners. Um, interesting. The ranch um, located in the west um, Uintah County, bordering the Ute Indian Reservation, was popularly dubbed the UFO Ranch. Um, it has a 50-year history of odd events and sightings, okay? Um, Knapp and Keller cite the 1974 book, The Utah UFO Display. That is a book you can uh, take a look at, which describes UFO sightings on this ranch. Um, it details an earlier investigation that alleged UFO sightings in the region as partial, partial confirmation of their account. According to Keller and Knapp, they saw or investigated evidence of close to 100 incidents, include uh, vanishing and mutilated cattle. Hey, who are you tonight? <laughs> Hey, Chris. Working hard. Careful out there. You might encounter a skinwalker. <laughs> okay. Uh, they investigated evidence of close to 100 um, incidents that include vanishing and mutilated cattle. What do you guys think of that uh, mutilated cattle or... Um, incidents. What's your guys' opinions on the mutilated? Oh, great. Oh, please. I, my poor eyes. That's terrible. That, that's got to be a sight. The freaks were just spotted streaking. Yeah, I don't know which is worse. You'd be better off for seeing a skinwalker. Anyway, um, what do you guys think of <laughs> what do you guys think of uh, the mutilated cattle incidents, or you know, even deer or things that have been seen? What do you guys think about that? Is it alien? It's funny how when you see documentaries or uh, stories about the mutilated animals, especially cattle, why is there no bl there's no huge puddles of blood? like an animal would bleed out. Um, and it's very precise, uh, just certain things. An animal, if it's a, um, you know, a scavenging type animal, coyote or a bear or something, they're going to rip that thing to shreds. It's not going to be um, so as precise. So what do you guys think about that? <coughs> anyway, excuse me. Uh, the mutilated cattle, sightings of identified flying objects or orbs, large animals uh, with piercing red eyes that they say were not injured when struck by bullets, um, your skinwalkers, and invisible objects emitting destructive magnetic fields. Hmm. Uh, the National, uh, what was that called? That they, The National Institute for Discovery Science. Okay. I didn't want to... Uh, shorten it without you knowing what that was. Um, they characterize them as an effort, um, as an attempt to get hard data using, of course, your scientific approach. Investigators admitted to difficulty obtaining evidence um, consistent. Cattle mutilations have been a part of the folklore uh, of the surrounding area for decades. But the NID Sci founder, uh, purchased the ranch and investigation funding was reportedly the result of his being convinced by stories of mutilations that included tales of strange lights, unusual impressions um, told by the family of uh, the former ranch owners. So, interesting on that. Um, I find that rather interesting that um, those large animals, you know, um, are um, have the piercing eyes and um, 
you know, if they're immune to bullets, apparently. Um, I just, I just want to become a skinwalker. How, how does that happen? Um, according to uh, the skinwalker curse, um, is desired and acquired. Okay. Um, the state, there are stories of shape-shifting creatures across the Navajo Nation. The 24,000-plus reservation land encompassing most of northeastern Arizona. And, of course, the adjacent corner sections of New Mexico and Utah. So you have the northeastern Arizona, uh, New Mexico, and Utah there. A taboo subject amongst natives. Skinwalkers are seldom discussed, with members outside the tribe and rarely even inside. The Navajo skinwalker legend is not unlike that of the European werewolf. A once ordinary human discovers the ability to shift into animal form at night, where his doings then become almost exclusively evil. But unlike the werewolf, the skinwalker curse is desired and acquired. Uh, skinwalkers do not have the bad luck to be bitten and forced into the curse. Rather, they want it and are willing to perform extraordinary rites of evil to achieve this. There are multiple legends behind the origin of the Navajo skinwalker. Uh, one claims that the Navajos mastered shapeshifting in order to escape persecution and relocation. Of course, that makes sense, right? Uh, the Kit Carson-led cornering of the tribe deep in um, Canyon de Shelley, and later uh, their forced and disastrous relocation to Bosque du Redondo. Uh, so that is one um, legend or myth or whatever you want to call it, um, that they became skinwalkers to, you know, escape this. Another version relates to the Navajo belief in the Anasazi curse. Now, isn't that interesting? The Anasazi were responsible for the prevailing witchcraft in the Navajo tribes and that Navajo skinwalkers use the off-limit Anasazi runes and grave sites to gain certain powers. Now, isn't that interesting? See how things tie into each other. Uh, the most prominent history of the skinwalker tells of a particular form of Navajo witch, or anti-gin, um, and there's a name for it, let me, hope I lay pronounce this right, called Ai Nadalushi, translated to mean with it, um, it goes on all fours. It's usually a medicine man of high ranking, or high-ranking priest who has obtained supernatural powers through breaking a cultural taboo, including murder, seduction, or the corrupting of a family member. Upon accepting this deep and consuming level of witchcraft, skinwalkers are banished forever from a tribe. Prowling alone in the desert, a skinwalker has the ability to shapeshift into any animal they wish. Although most commonly the animal is a coyote, wolf, cougar, fox, owl, or crow. And this is a reason why pelts of these animals are widely restricted among the Navajo. Did you know that? Uh, because they're, they're, um, they believe they're the skinwalkers. So the coyote, wolf, cougar, fox, owl, or crow pelt um, are widely restricted among the Navajo. Hmm. Uh, it also mentions that becoming a skinwalker could take the murder of a family member. Great. Uh, to become a skinwalker requires the most evil of deeds, the killing of a close family member. They literally become humans who have acquired immense supernatural power, including the ability to transform into animals and other people. Um, I, th I could well be, that could be a, an extremely, um, evil person. Um, I mean, think about that. Um, here's some facts about skinwalkers. I'll scare the crap out of you. I hope. <laughs> um, it's just the whole idea is fascinating to me that um, that they could be out there. Okay, here's some creepy facts I don't know if you knew. Uh, 
Uskin Walker is a